to Franklin has gone on to the how can I call it not church in the sky the great freeway of love in the sky yes great freeway of love there's a good one thank you Vic you're welcome and now our distinguished guest in studio early because he's getting ready to hang out with the future governor of Florida I like this don't you Clark you should be you should be happy you're going to be our Democrat for the Florida House, and you and the gov the future governor wants to hang. Uh, no, no. Okay, you're trying to keep it on a low keel. Okay, I got, I got you, I got you. Anyhow, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, Clark Anderson <laughs> in studio. Thank you. Would you? Get yeah, let me get that over here. Okay, there. Yeah, that would that would help. Hey, you can actually hear me. Yes. <laughs> Good morning, sir. I like the uh, the outfit. Uh, very snazzy there. Well, I've got a lot of meetings today. Uh, the big one today is the political salsa down in Orlando, and I'm going to be have a table there and meet all the uh, all, all the uh, Puerto Rican uh, uh, voters. If they have a chance to meet with me, all the voters are, it, isn't it open to just about anybody? Or oh, of course, of course. It's just it's just uh, that's the emphasis of their group. Oh, okay, okay. Just check. 26 after the hour, um, and then you're going to, and they're having lunch with uh, some, some hobnob folks, and yeah, yeah. And tell us how the campaign's been going so far. Oh, the campaign's been going great so far. I've uh, been really spending my time meeting with uh, voters, been doing, not usually dressed like this, I've been doing a lot of walking and door-to-door -door kind of stuff, uh, and it's uh, talking, to the, talking to the folks in the district and hearing about their, their ideas and uh, their concerns. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, yeah just tell me a little bit about Clark Anderson. How? What makes Clark Anderson tick so to speak? What makes you run? <laughs> what, what, what drives you? What motivates you? How's that? You know I think it's important. This is just a really important election. This is a tough time for our country. There's a lot of division. There's a lot of uh, attacks on um, really on at the level that I'm working at, the, the Florida way of life. It's just, it's, I see in talking to people, it's sort of slipping away. I uh, decided to retire from a career. I had a career in technology, uh, high technology. I've had, you know, the opportunity to play with all the best new toys my career. And so it's been a lot of, it's been a lot of fun. But I think that um, the future of Florida, in this area, especially in Central Florida, is going to be bringing in some of those high technology companies and but we have some we have some issues with bringing them in, um, and the issues are just quality of life. Just what I'm hearing from the uh, voters out there. They're having a tough time. Tough time by meeting. Well, right now, uh, you know, if if you've got a family and you've got both both breadwinners working a forty hour a week job and the, and they can't make ends meet, you know, something's not right. Uh, their their buying power is lower than it was before the uh, recession. Uh, Florida has some of the lowest wages in the country, and right now, although this market is the hottest market in the country for new jobs, it is the hardest place in the United States for a working family to live. I can vouch for that one. Tell me a little bit about your technology background, Clark. Sure. I started off. I um, actually started off as an offshore. Uh, drilling fluid engineer uh, for a while, so I learned a lot about what's what's right and what's very, very wrong with offshore drilling. Uh, but then I started my own electronics company. We manufactured uh, electronic packages, and so I learned about small business. I learned about building a business, having employees, and then went on to work for uh, primarily the, I worked for the federal, state, and local governments and a lot of coalitions. I worked a lot with the military. And uh, that included, oh gosh, a few years ago I was in Afghanistan for two and a half years. I would wound up being appointed the cybersecurity manager for northern Afghanistan. Wow! How, and, and you think that the, that experience would tr would correlate into running for uh, House District 30? Well, I do. I do. I think that, you know, I understand what these technology companies are looking for. And at the end of the day, what they're looking for is a good quality of life for their employees. They want to attract the, the best and the brightest, and they want to live in areas that have 
affordable housing, they have good transportation, they have uh, commitment to diversity, they have good health care, all of the things that Florida, uh, unfortunately, is middle of the pack to the bottom on things. How can you bring high-tech jobs to Florida, Clark? Well, you go to the companies and you show them what we have to offer. Uh, certainly the Space Coast, you see a lot of private industry coming in there for the new rocket launches. We have the theme parks here. We have uh, any kind of, uh, in the middle, right here uh, at UCF, we have the really some of the center for sensors for imaging and for the simulation technology that's used to train all the all the all the armed forces on the newest equipment so there's a lot of things to attract them here okay uh, high-tech jobs sound great Clark but what can you do for struggling families well when you create an economy that's being driven by companies coming in who are willing to pay good salaries and of course there's a lot of spin-off industries they need they need workers, they need highly skilled uh, uh, guys in just anything from electronics to uh, you know, electrical jobs. I mean, the schools need to uh, train, they need to train people to, to, to uh, meet that workforce need. So there's a, there's a lot of needs here, um, and, but for the working families here, it brings a better quality of job. We've, we've spent a long time attracting businesses that really come in here, you know, it sounds rough, but to sink their fangs in the community. They they come in here, they want tax breaks, they want all sorts of, all sorts of special things, uh, which drains away the resources the community has to provide all these things that people need. And then they want to hire the, the lowest cost worker they can find and that, you know, the taxpayer winds up paying again. They pay, they pay to make up the deficit in services, and then they pay to support the workers, you know, so they won't faint in the aisles of Walmart from hunger. They need to have food stamps. Wow. Clark, tell us a little bit about gun issues. What is your stance on that? Well, you know, I've worked uh, with the military, and uh, I own guns. I think that uh, Florida has a strong tradition in hunting, in, uh, and I think that people certainly need to have the ability to have guns for self-defense. But what we don't need is the military hardware. We don't need the military-grade uh, weapons, which do so much damage because of the uh, rate that they can fire and the and the power the power of their rounds. That's why there's such high casualties. Uh, the other thing about guns, really, is I think we need a culture of personal responsibility. Everybody talks about personal responsibility. Well, if you own a gun, you need to be personally responsible. Just like the soldiers that I met in Afghanistan, uh, they were personally responsible for everything that happened to that weapon. And people need to lock up guns. They need to, you know, and really, guns cost a lot of money for Floridians. We spend $4.2 billion a year. Taxpayers write that check to the hospitals just to treat gunshot victims. That's nothing about the disrupted lives and the, and the loss of breadwinners and things like that. So it's a huge issue in Florida. And I think the voters want to see change. I agree with you 110% on that one. Uh, tell me a little bit about uh, health care. Well, there's another area that, uh, you know, we spend we send $6 billion a year now uh, in money that could come back and help uh, working class families get uh, cheaper, more, you know, it, it, that helps supplement the costs for uh, health care policies and they can have good comprehensive health care and yet because of the Republicans just they don't want to talk about health care, that money goes to Washington and never comes back to Florida. So there's six billion dollars right there that wouldn't cost anybody anything and yet would help, you know, people need to have, they can't be living from paycheck to paycheck worrying about one medical thing you know destroying their family or losing their mortgage wow that's a, that's a very good point Clark tell us a little bit about sprawl and urban development well that's a big issue here I think that anybody in the district here who drives to work has seen over the last few years they uh, you know at least twice as many stoplights they have to go through uh, everybody wants to live in Florida I don't blame them I love living here this is a great place but we've got to think about um, how the developments are coming in. You know, we the developers make the most money by selling, putting a nice big house on a nice quarter acre, half acre lot, and they all look nice. And, but 
the fact is, is that this is the hardest place for a working class family to find affordable housing. So we have to be a lot smarter in working with the developers. One, that they will uh, look at the true cost of bringing in development. We won't wind up having, you know, having double the time for a 911 response because all of a sudden there's twice as many people to serve in the area. And also we need to look at uh, and work with the developers and say, look, if you want the permits to build those nice pricey houses, you also have to provide affordable housing for the working class people in the district. And, and they can do it, and we can work together and do it. It doesn't have to make the developers broke. Um, it, it's a good idea that really, really needs to be addressed in Florida. This is the toughest issue in Central Florida right now, where everybody's going to live. They just had that situation, uh, that vote on the uh, Oviedo track out off of, um, what was that, Red Buck Road? Yes. On the other end, and it's yeah. like, that was crazy. Yeah. How are you going to put a million, well, not a million homes. It was, it was some ridiculous amount of homes out in that neck of the woods. And it's like, how do you control the sprawl out there? Because it's already, you've already got a two-lane highway going through the quote-unquote bushes, and now you want to put all these homes out there? That's crazy. Yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a desire to just keep spreading and spreading. Um, in Seminole County especially, they have the rural boundary where they limit homes to, you know, a few acre uh, plots of land and things like that. And the developers have been pushing and pushing to develop in these areas. And it, it does two things. One, the people that live there don't want the dense housing. And it's not necessary. But the other thing is those areas are along major uh, waterways, the St. John's River, the Apache River, those areas are pristine wilderness areas that are needed to keep Florida from being polluted. Uh, they're very important watersheds and, we need, and they just want to build in these areas, which we know in a couple of years are just going to flood and we're going to have to pay to rebuild those houses again and again. Yeah, that's true. When you build in a swamp, it's going to come back sooner or later. And last but not least, because I know you've got to run off real quick, uh, what is so special about District 30? Well, District 30 is a, is a special district uh, from a campaign standpoint. Uh, it used to be a Democratic district. It has a uh, strong tradition of uh, working class families in the area that, that are looking for some change. Uh, the incumbent in it uh, was elected during the Republican wave a couple of cycles ago. And the other thing that's important is this is right in the middle of the I-4 corridor. The I-4 corridor, from a political standpoint, is purple Florida. That's the area that goes back and forth between Democrats and Republicans. And uh, half of my district is in Orange County, half is in Seminole County. The Seminole County has been trending toward uh, the Democratic Party. And really, if there's going to be any changes in Florida, you're going to see it here. And the changes that you see here affects actually who goes in the White House. Uh, if you don't carry Florida, you're probably not going to win a national election. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, Clark Anderson, our future Florida House District 30 Chris, Democrat. Thank you, so, thank you so much. And glad to have you on the show, as always, Clark. It's great. Thank you. Okay. Boy, see, we cover politics. We cover... Sports we cover. We do everything here. We do do everything here. Divas we cover. Facebook we cover everything. Yes. Anyhow, political salsa is tonight, uh, 5:30 downtown Orlando.